My friends, we're going to integrate sine cube theta times close to the fourth theta. And it's going to be awesome because we're going to do two substitutions. The first one is with sine squared theta equals one minus cos squared theta. So we'll substitute that into here. And this looks more complicated, but it's not. And the reason we did this substitution was so that we'd have this leftover sine theta. And the reason we did that is because now that everything's in terms of cos theta, and every time you see a derivative of a function inside the integral, you automatically want to think substitution. Can I do a substitution? And in this case, we can. So we'll set u equal to cos theta. Therefore, we'll take the derivative and get d, uh, du equal to negative sine theta d theta. And notice that I set u equal to cos theta, and I did the substitution that gives us sine theta here. I couldn't do it the other way around. I didn't want to change this to substitute like cos theta equals one minus sine theta. I didn't want to write everything else in terms of sine. I wanted to write everything in terms of cos because this exponent is odd and this trig identity drops a even exponent down. So we want to have a leftover sine. We couldn't have a leftover cos because this is to the fourth. We need an odd exponent in order to do that. Uh, this way anyways. So okay, so we'll substitute that in and that gives us everything in terms of kind of polynomials here. We'll expand the brackets and at this point we can party with the reverse power rule and to finish off our integral we'll substitute back and we have our integral in all its glory. Ha, there it is. Yo, you definitely, definitely, definitely need to check out this integral. The more you do, the better you'll get. This one's a little bit trickier. It looks the same but if you notice the exponents are both odd in this case. So it's a little bit different, but hang in there. The more you do, the better you'll get. Cheers.